When I started the prep work for this new project, I figured this should be a fairly quick build. I was wrong. It's actually not a hard build, but it took me longer than I anticipated. This is because of what I didn't anticipate. Long story short, about halfway through the project, I had to start over. So in this video, you will see how to build this bubble feature and what went wrong. So let's dive in. I start off by cutting the bottom plate. The size will be 14 and 5 eighths by four and a half inches. Using some jigs, I position the tubing in place. I then trace the shape onto both the left and right sides of the base plate. Then using a jig, I mark the center on all the squares. The outside squares will be the position for the oil tubes and the center square will be for the light tube. Using a 1 inch bit, I drill through the center of the squares. Here, I am using a 7 8 inch bit to drill a hole for the light tubes. Since the stems on the bulkheads are not long enough, I need to countersink using a 3 quarter inch bit. I now finish drilling through using a quarter inch bit. The last holes are for screwing the towers in place, as well as one for the RF receiver. This one I forgot and had to drill later in the build. Now with the holes drilled, I sprayed the base plate with a frosted paint. I will now be adding the bulkheads with the threaded end on the side that has been countersunk. Now that the base plate is complete, I move on to cutting the square tubes. I cut eight at 23 and a half inches and two at 23 and a quarter inches. The shorter ones will be for the light tubes. Using the same frosted glass paint that I used for the base plate, I spray the two light tubes. I then position the four oil tubes around the light tube. I use a level to make sure the tubes are sitting plumb then I clamp the tubes in place. I now sand both sides of the tubes to make sure there are no gaps. I first use 180 grit sandpaper, then finish it with 220 grit. I will now be bonding the tubes to the base plate. For this I am using a product called Weld On 4, which is a water-thin solvent. When this compound wicks into the joint, it will cause the acrylic to melt, forming a continuous bond. To ensure a solid connection between the tubes and plate, I then add weight. I will let this sit overnight. I am now cutting quarter inch acrylic for the top plate. The size will be 11 and a quarter inches long by four and a quarter inches wide. Here I flip the towers over onto the top base plate. I will then use jigs to help center the tubes. I then trace the tube position onto the top plate. Then as I did on the bottom plate, I will find the center on all the squares. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I had to start over. Let me set the scene. After I finished tracing the tubes onto the top plate, I move them over to my right out of the way. I then switch tripods for the next shot and set the one I wasn't using to my right, less out of the way. I just set up a dominoes effect. Everything was going great until I bumped into the tripod. You will hear what happens next. Damage report. Shields down to 0%. Warp core obliterated. Minor damage to sensors. At this point I thought, there is no way I am starting over.
But then after calming down, I thought, there is no way in hell I'm starting over. But the next day, I decided I would. I figured, since I didn't need to film it, I should be able to get back to the pre-disaster point in a day. I am now cutting some cherry for the top. The size will be 11 and 3 quarter inches long by 4 and 3 quarter inches wide. I then center the acrylic top onto the wood top and use two-sided tape to hold the position. I am doing this so the vent holes perfectly match up between the two. This will make more sense later on in the video. Using a 1 8 inch bit, I drill through both the acrylic and cherry. I will do this on all the squares. Then on just the acrylic, I drill 3 8 inch holes. On the center squares, I drill 7 8 inch holes. These holes are just for a light effect, where the outside holes will be for both an effect as well as vent holes. The final step on the top plate is sanding the edges. I start with 180 grit, then finish with 800 grit. Before attaching the top plate, I need to install the LED lights. To glue the lights to the inside of the square tube, I use a product called Instant Bond. The glue works together with an activator, which will instantly harden the glue. Once all the lights are glued in place, I use some LED light connectors to feed each group to one connection. Now with the lights complete, the next step is to attach the top plate. Using jigs, I center the towers onto the plate. Then I apply Weld On 4 to the joints. The next stage is to connect up the plumbing. For this I'm using 3 16 inch aquarium hose, 4 small air pumps, 4 shutoff valves, and 8 check valves. Since the medium I will be using is oil, I am using fuel line valves coming out of each tube. Before connecting the tubes to the base plate, I mark them. This is so when adjusting the oil flow, I will know which valve affects what chamber. I will now begin building the base for the towers. To start with, I glue up a panel which will be used for the bottom of the base. Next, I will cut the pieces for the sides and ends of the box. The sides will be 16 by 4 and 3 quarter inches, and the ends 5 and 3 quarters by 4 and 3 quarter inches. Next, I plane down the sides and ends from 4 quarter to 5 eighths. The reason for this is I will be building a finger joint box and prefer to use thinner material. Using the Incra eye box jig, I cut the fingers on the sides and end pieces. I won't go into any kind of detail on this process since there are plenty of videos available on this.
Using a one inch bit, I am now drilling holes into the cherry top for the venting tubes. I use the previously drilled one eighth inch holes to position the bit. Now with the cherry base stained and finished, I will wire up the electrical. For this, I'm using an extension cord and an on-off switch. If I ever build this bubble feature again, which I won't, I would make the base a little larger. As you can see, it is a little crowded in there. I am now cutting the one inch tubes for the venting holes. I will need eight at one and three quarter inches long and two at two and a quarter inches long. On one side of the tubes, I stand from 180 grit to 220 grit. The other side, which will be facing out, I sand from 180 grit to 600 grit. For the final step, I center the cherry top onto the acrylic plate. I then clamp it in place. I also add spacers between the two, so the weld on doesn't wick into the cherry. Here I tap the tube for some reason. I then add the weld on to the joint. If you watch the top of the tube, you can see how it darkens slightly when the weld on wicks under. This completes the building of the twin bubble towers. If you liked the video, please hit the subscribe and like button. If not, I would appreciate if you hit them anyways.